Hello, in this problem we're going to factor the polynomial completely and find all of its zeros and their multiplicities. Okay, so let's go ahead and work through it. Solution. So because we're going to look for the zeros and we're going to try to factor this, um, let's just go ahead and start by setting it equal to zero, right? Because we're looking for the zeros, so we're basically setting it equal to zero and solving for x. So we have x to the fourth plus 10x squared plus 25, and that's equal to zero. And this is uh, what's called a perfect uh, square uh, trinomial because it factors as a perfect square. It's a very common one. Um, if you don't know that, you could just try to factor it by guessing and doing this. And then this piece here is going to go here, okay? x squared, and this one will go here as well. And check this out. When you multiply x squared times x squared, you get x to the fourth. Um, oftentimes the way this is taught is like people make a substitution, like they'll call this piece u, and this becomes u squared. But if you think about it, you can just put this piece here and this piece here, and when you multiply them, you get x to the fourth. So you need two numbers that multiply to 25, so five and five are a good first guess. And if you make them both positive, everything works out beautifully, right? Because if you multiply this out, x squared times x squared is x to the fourth. The middle term, 5x squared, with the outer term, inner and outer, 5x squared plus 5x squared gives us 10x squared. And then 5 times 5 gives you 25. So it checks completely. Um, many people would perhaps skip this, and they would go straight to this step, which is what I wanted to do. Uh, because I kind of have this one memorized. Uh, I've seen this so many times that uh, I know that that's how it factors. And you could do that as well. And in any case, we're here, and we have to keep factoring if possible. It turns out that this does factor even further, and it's a little bit tricky to see, okay? So if you have uh, x squared plus, uh, let's say, 4, you can write that as x minus 2i, x plus 2i, right? Complex number uh, times its conjugate, right? This would be, you know, the analog to this would be a squared plus b squared is equal to a plus bi, a minus bi. So you could do the same thing here, right? Except it's not a four, so it might be harder to think about. Instead of four, it's a five, so you can't use two. Instead, you have to use the square root of five. So we can do x plus i root five. Notice I put the i first, just as a formality. x minus i root five. And this, this one does it again, x plus i root five. So I picked an example here that is a little bit harder, right? So if you're doing problems like this, this one's a little bit trickier because of this, right? It's a little bit weird. Again, I always go back to something simple like this. Um, you can do that. If it was a nine, it'd be a three and a three, same thing. But when it's a, an odd number like this, you, get, you have to use a square root. And this certainly checks, right? Um, if, you, if you square the x, here you get x squared. You put a plus, you square the square root of five, you get five, so it checks, it's equal to this. Okay, we're looking for the multiplicities, so we want to group together all the like parentheses. So we've got one here and one here, so we can write that as x plus i square root of 5 squared, and then we have one here and we have one here, so this would be x minus i square root of 5 squared, and that's equal to 0. And the reason we want to do that is because now we can identify the multiplicities. The multiplicity is basically this number here, so 2. So they both have multiplicity 2. And this one here, if you set this equal to 0, the 2 goes away because you can just take the square root of both sides, set this equal to 0, and you get our first 0. So negative i root 5, that's the first one. And the multiplicity is 2, right? Multiplicity, 2. You notice that if we hadn't grouped them together, you would have gotten the multiplicity incorrect. So to find the multiplicity, you want to group everything together, okay? It's very important. Here, this is the same. It's just going to give you i square root of 5. 
And again, the multiplicity here is to multiplicity to most people skip all of this work. I find that people don't often show all this. You just go from here to the answer, which is fine. Uh, just state the multiplicity. And yeah, and a little bit different, but I hope maybe this has helped someone out there who is trying to learn math. Good luck.